morning, everybody. Again, welcome to the IGNCA, the third Katakar festival, which is a storytelling festival. And this is our third edition. And this has been organized by the IGNCA in collaboration with Nivesh. I would just make a small request to all the teachers and the students to not get up in the middle of the performance and leave because you know that just disrupts the performance so please wait till the end and there are like small breaks so you can just sort of if you have to leave leave then so uh, storytelling is an ancient tradition it's a part of our oral history but it's also something which has been reinterpreted in a modern moment and modern mode and this is what we are trying to do at IGNCA. We are trying to create uh, new ways of thinking about storytelling as a performance, as a practice, as an art form. Uh, the first performer today with us is uh, Tim Ralphs. Tim is from Nottingham in the UK. Uh, he is someone who's known to fuse traditional with modern forms of storytelling. Uh, apart from being uh, a very good storyteller. He has won a very prestigious British award for storytelling excellence. He has performed widely in the UK. This is his first time in India. So let us give a warm welcome to Tim and a round of applause for Tim. Over to you. Good morning. I want to tell you a story. This is a story from Mexico, from the middle part of the Americas. It is a story about a little farmer. This little farmer, he lived with his wife on a little farm. And on that farm, they grew great big round pumpkins. They grew tall yellow corn. And on that farm, they had their most treasured possession. Because as much as they loved each other, the little farmer and his little wife, even more than that, they loved their cow. That's what cows are like, isn't it? Their great big horns and their mouths and their, their beautiful eyes. This cow, this cow was the color of fresh milk. This cow was the color of, of your trousers when they're freshly clean. This cow was the most pure white color anyone had ever seen. And the farmer and his wife, they loved their cow. But they weren't the only people in that village that liked their cow. There was a priest, a reverend, a preacher who lived in that town. And in his heart, he yearned, he craved, he wanted the white cow for himself. Where I come from, if there's a villain, if there's a bad person in the story, you can show that you know how much of a wicked character he is by saying, boo, and then by making a noise like a snake, hiss. So if I was to tell you about this reverend, this priest, you could all go, boo. You could all go, hiss. And that means we all know that in this story, he is wicked. When he was in his church, when he was preaching to all the people that had come to see him on a Sunday, in his mind, in his heart, all he was thinking about was that beautiful white cow. And then one day, after church, he went over to the little farmer and he said, Nam, you should come and visit me at my house for dinner. And the little farmer, he was such a trusting man. He was so innocent in his heart that he went to dinner with that wicked priest. And the wicked priest, he showed the farmer all of his farm. 
all of his animals. You know that priest? He didn't have one cow. He didn't have ten cows. He had a... I haven't got enough fingers. He had a hundred cows. Can you just hold up your hands for me? He had a hundred cows. And when the little farmer saw all those cows, do you think he was happy? He felt sad. He thought, I am very poor. I've only got one cow. And the priest, he said, ah, what you have to understand is that if you give something away, then God rewards you 100 times over. If you give something away, God will give you back a hundred times more than you give away. And the farmer, he thought, he said, do you mean that if I give away my one beautiful white cow, what does the beautiful white cow look like? Let me see your cow faces. Let me see your lovely horns. If we give away my cow, said the farmer, do you mean that we're going to get 100 cows back? And the priest said, yes. If you give someone your cow, God will give you 100 other cows. Oh, said the farmer, and who should I give my cow to? Well, said the priest, you want to make sure that you give your cow to someone who is uh, a good man someone who is well respected in his community, somebody who knows how to look after cows. Oh, said the farmer, I could give my cow to you. Well, said the priest. Namaste. You all know Hindi? You know it very well. You have seen the game of Kutputli, right? We are going to show you today, it's the Rajasthan Kutputli. जो काट से बनती है लकड़ी का फेस होता है उसका और नीचे कपड़े कॉटन से उसके बॉडी और हाथ बनते हैं पहले हम जो शो करते थे ट्रेडिशनल हम ट्रैवलिंग आर्टिस्ट थे सारे के सारे एक गांव से दूसरे गांव दूसरे गांव से तीसरे गांव इस तरह से घुमा करते थे हम और ये जो स्टेज आप देख रहे हैं इस तरह का डबल स्टेज होता था एक कर्टन यहाँ भी होता था जिससे कि जो पपेटियर पपेट चला रहा है वो दिखाई नहीं देता है किस तरह से उसको मैनिपुलेशन किया जाता है लेकिन अब थोड़ा सा चेंज किया है ताकि आप सब लोग पपेट को देख सकें और पपेटियर को भी देख सकें कि पपेटियर पपेट को किस तरह से चलाता है किस तरह से मैनिपुलेशन करता है और क्या रिलेशन रहता है दोनों के अंदर दोनों उस वक्त क्या सोचते हैं क्या नहीं सोचते हैं तो इसलिए थोड़ा सा चेंज किया है कर्टन सामने का जो कर्टन है वो निकाल दिया है और ये पीछे का कर्टन हमारा वैसे का वैसे ही है तो आज हम आपको दिखाने जा रहे हैं कहानी अमर सिंह राठौड़ की रजपूत आनिशान की छोटा सा पार्ट है उसका देखिएगा और बजेगी मेरी तू और बजेगी थोड़ी सी और बजेगी साई 
को सलाम करो मारो तो सलावत था दिखाई मरोड़ सुर वीर थी नागरो पीरू में राव की कचेड़ी धुजाई सारी खेल तिकार जैसे मिर्घन न बावरो पहे पान राय गज सिंह के अमर सिंह राखी रजपूती मजपूती नव नागरो लो से पाव से हिलाई सारी बात जाए होती समेर तो छिनाए ले तो नागरो अरे ढपाल जी तू यहाँ क्या कर रहा है तुझे पता नहीं यहाँ शंशा का दरबार लगने वाला है मान जा अरे मान जा नहीं मानेगा और बजेगी मेरी तो और बजेगी थोड़ी सी और बजेगी मेरी तो अरे मान जा अरे मैं तो आपके दरबार की शोभा ही बढ़ा रहा हूँ और बजेगी मेरी तो और बजेगी थोड़ी सी और बजेगी अरे मान जा नहीं मानेगा मानेगा नहीं नहीं मानेगा दरबार में जश्न शुरू किया जाए और ये कौन कहते हैं ये कहते हैं अनारकली अनारकली सब लोगों को नमस्कार करो ये नमस्कार ये नमस्कार ये नमस्कार और क्या तुम्हारा डांस होता है क्या सब लोग देखते हैं
बनाजी मारा रे बनाजी मारा रे बनाजी मारा रे बनाजी मारा रे बना रे मारो यड़ के धड़ के तोरणी ये मत जाए तोरणी ये मत ना जाए सालारी नजरा ना गे बनारे मारो मांडलियो मत राई जेरे कलियारो फूले मत राई जेरे कलियारो फूले सारारी नजरा ना गेले ओ बन्ना मारा केसरिया हजारी रे गुलिरो फूले हजारी रे गुलिरो फूले अब नीडी रे आवारी बनारे मारो यड़ के धड़ के तोरणी ये मत जाए तोरणी ये मत ना जाए सालारी नजरा ना गेले बनारे मारो यड़ के धड़ के तोरणी ये मत जाए तोरणी ये मत ना जाए सालारी नजरा ना गे Can you hear me? Yes. How are you feeling? Are you tired? No. Wow, you're amazing at listening to stories, but some of you have been sitting for a very long time. So I invite you to stand up. Everybody stand up. Let's do our morning exercises. Stretch up and yawn. Ooh. Very good. And again. One more time for luck, really loud. <laughs> Shake your hands. Up in the air. And down. And up. And down. Behind you. In front. Under one leg. Under the other leg. Have a little wave. Hello. Yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo. Up in the air. In front. Behind. Up. Down. One leg. Other leg. Sides. In front. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Behind you. In front of you. One up, one down. One under one leg, one up. And the other way. Oh, have a shake. Oh, and roll your shoulders. How are you feeling? Good? Okay, now you can sit down. Are you good at singing? Good. I think you'll be better than me. Copy me. Once upon a time, in the middle of winter, there was a man, and he was walking through the forest. It was dark. It was cold. The snow lay like a thick white blanket on the ground. There were no stars in the sky, only the tiniest moon to light his way. The man was so cold that his fingers 
and his toes felt like ice. He walked through the forest. He was so hungry that his belly felt like an empty cave. Are you listening? Are you all listening? Because this man in the forest, he saw something ahead of him. He saw a tiny little house, small house with a light in the window. He thought maybe here there will be somebody at home. Maybe there will be a fire and I can warm my hands. Maybe there will be some food for my hungry belly. So he walked towards the house. He knocked on the door and waited. But there was silence. Should we give that silence a go? There was silence. So the man knocked again on the door. And this time he heard footsteps creaking down the corridor towards him. The door opened just enough for him to see a face, a wrinkled face, bright eyes staring at him. There was a little old woman and the old woman said, go away. I don't like strangers. I don't like strangers knocking on my door in the middle of the night. Go away. And she tried to slam the door in the man's face, but the man put his foot in the door so the door couldn't close. He said, please, please, old woman, I'm so cold. I am so hungry. Let me come to your house and warm my hands and have something small to eat. And the old woman, what do you think she said? Ah, oh, she said, well, I suppose you can come into my house, but only for a short while. You can warm your hands, but I have no food in the house. So the man came into the old woman's house. And he sat down by the fire. Can you imagine? It's hard to imagine with the sun on you, but can you imagine that you are so cold that your fingers feel like ice? And now you can warm them by the fire. Warm your hands by the fire. Does that feel good? The man began to get warm in his whole body, but he was still really, really hungry. But the old woman said she didn't have any food. Do we believe her? Do you think she is telling the truth or telling a lie? Yeah, that's what the man thought too. But he had an 